Hey Saints, welcome back to another week of SFHS Today. I'm Casey Shields. And I'm Willie Maffelder. On January 21st, there was a major terrorist attack in Kabul, Afghanistan. This is a symbol of recent destabilization of the region. Taliban insurgents drove in ambulance laced with explosives. According to the reports from the BBC, President Trump rejects the idea of negotiations with the militants, and he says that he sees military victory over the insurgency. In school news, NHS are hosting the blood drive on Valentine's Day. Students 16 and above are able to participate and help those in need. When and where is the blood drive and where do students sign up? The blood drive is going to be held here on Wednesday, February 14th, and it's in the gym. And it goes from about 8 to 1. And the sign-ups actually started this week. How much blood can we donate? Typically, a normal blood donor gives one pint of blood. Okay. Um, they do also have something called a double blood donation, which then you give two pints of blood, and not very many people do that. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to donate that way also. What do you have to do to qualify to donate blood? So when you sign up during lunch, there'll be a form on the tables that talk about height and weight requirements. And then the day of, they also check for your hemoglobin, which is your iron. So if you are signed up to give blood, you definitely want to drink lots of water beforehand and eat foods that are rich in iron the day before. Why are There's a huge need for blood just in the state of Minnesota. And also sometimes when we do it in the spring, we lose a lot of our spring athletes, our track kids, our baseball kids, softball kids. And so I'm hoping that I can get some of those athletes during the winter months. Or if they're winter athletes and they don't do something in the spring, I can catch those kids in the spring months. I'm also hoping once the uh, students see this during the month of February and they didn't get to and they'll see it's a really cool thing, that they'll want to join it then for the spring blood drive, which is May 2nd. Last week, some upperclassmen participated in the Courage Retreat. This was held at Constance Free Church in Andover. Reporters Owen Luckow and Austin Adler attended the retreat and spoke with people who participated. So the Courage Retreat is where a bunch of us high schoolers, there was a lot of NHS and then some other ones this year, we go over to a church in Andover with the seventh grade students and we just do different activities to help them with like courage and friendship and stuff like that. What did you enjoy about the Courage Retreat the most? Um, I think I enjoyed most seeing the seventh graders bond with people or talk to people that they don't usually talk to or hang around with. My favorite part about the Courage Retreat was probably when we did the small group circle things with the students, with the seventh graders, because it was good to like connect with each one of them and see like them get comfortable and you know be themselves. So, did anything significant or anything abundant stand out with the seventh graders with you? Um. After like doing silly games with them, they broke all the like awkward barriers and stuff with each other. They just didn't care that they didn't talk to their friends or like those people. They were just other people. My favorite part was the pebble in the pond. I liked how everyone kind of they just opened up and talked about stuff. Would you do it again if you had the chance? Honestly, I would. I love little kids and I just love seeing how happy they were talking to people. Prom is just around the corner, so prom committee is looking for new members to help plan and set up this year's dance. Reporters Bailey Reitz, Emily Nuremberger, and Maddie Chester spoke to the head of the committee, Ms. Schrag, to get information. Prom committee is open up to any junior that would like to be on prom committee. You can join us. Um, we typically meet on Wednesdays after school, right after school from 225 until however long you can stay. Usually our meetings are wrapped up within the hour. Uh, we sat in a classroom and looked at different catalogs for like the prom gifts and different ideas for prom. They will pick up the pick out the decorations that go into the gym for Grand March and every prom person that goes to prom will leave with a gift. So they also get to pick out the gifts. You have to go to meetings every week, Wednesday, either after school or during Saints time. 
and we basically just plan the whole prom and then you have to come the Friday before to set up in the gyms and then the Sunday after prom to take it down and you have to be a junior. When prom tickets go on sale after spring break, you will be able to pick up an information sheet. So you'll want to grab this uh, to make sure that you read about the timeline and prices and all that. If you complete like all the hours and you go to the Friday and the Sunday, you may be able to get a free ticket to prom, depending on how much we have in the budget after. Tony Coronation was last week. The nominees were anxious for the results of who would be crowned king and queen. Um, I, it's pretty exciting knowing that the people chose me to be part of the court this year. Um, I had to go pick out a dress and everything or like wear my last year's one and get that all ready. And then I had to, we have to do like a walkthrough so we know when to walk and how to do all that. And then like answer a couple questions that they're gonna announce. That's what I had to do. Yeah, I had to answer those questions and go pick up a tux and so. Um, I'm really honored and I feel honored to represent the student body. Uh, student council is in charge of Pep Fest, so it's kind of difficult being on Snow Royalty or whatever because now we are, are only left with our, pres our vice president running it, so it should be, it should be fun though. Um, let's see, for Snow Week and Omni, uh, let's see, I'm excited. What's your favorite part about Snow Week? Um, my Snow Week, oh, let's see, I can't wait to wear my business suit. Next year, SFHS is adding a Ceramics 3 class to the registration book. James Tachik and Laura Brewer spoke with Ms. Bequay about what the new class will add for those that enjoyed the previous class. Do you like ceramics? I do. It's a very nice way to start off the day. It's relaxing. How and why did Ceramics 3 become a class? Ceramics 3 became a class because um, I've had a lot of Ceramics 2 students ask, well, what's next? Um, several kids want to do independent studies. They just, they just want to do more. And so I listened to the students. I made another class. And um, hopefully a bunch of kids sign up so we can keep going further into ceramics. What are some current projects you're working on? I'm doing a sculpture of a heart right now and glazing my slab lantern. What is Ceramics 3 and what type of project will it be? Ceramics 3 is going to be an advanced class for um, students who really enjoy ceramics um, and have a passion to move forward. Um, we're going to do some advanced techniques on the pottery wheel. We'll do some new surface decoration techniques. Uh, there's going to be a group project. Students work together. Uh, and students will design a lot of their own pieces using the techniques that they learned in 1 and 2. So. Would you encourage other students or incoming freshmen to either further on their experience with ceramics or to begin it? Uh, yeah. If you're not good at drawing, then maybe you're good at ceramics because then you can actually like feel what you're doing and shape out what you want to do. I just hope that students are really open-minded and ready to hit the ground running um, to make pieces that exemplify their artistic taste and their skills. And I hope to have students sign up that really want to challenge yeah. themselves. Recently, many of you have been out with the flu. Jake Hansen and Montana Levi have gathered some tips on staying well. Prevent flu this season? So yeah, influenza is a, a virus that's spread, you know, by coughing and sneezing. Um, and so it's really important that if you are ill that you cover your cough um, and that you keep your hands washed really well um, if you're ill or if you're not ill. Um, the number one way to prevent influenza is to get the flu vaccine and it's actually still not too late to get that. Um, we had a lot of kids out ill last week and the week before, um, but if you have not had symptoms of influenza yet, then it would be good to get the flu vaccine. That's all we have for you this week, Saints. Stay tuned for RQT weather and sports. It's the random question thing. Ding! If you could be in any cartoon from when you were younger, which one would it be? 
probably be Chowder. Ed, Ed and Eddie. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Fairly Odd Parents. Pokemon. Uh, the Simpsons. Um, I'd be Caillou. Just because. Caillou. I'd be, uh, Adventure Time. Be. It'd probably be Spongebob. Uh, I'm Walker and I'm Tommy. Welcome back to another week of sports. Boys basketball had a game last Tuesday against Chisago Lakes. They lost 68-69. to Girls basketball also had a game against Chisago, which they won 67-60. to Speaking of basketball, girls basketball has a very good season so far, and one of the many hardworking players on the team has been getting a lot of time on the court lately. Laura Brewer and James Toshik went out and got more information on Dalen O'Brien, this week's Athlete of the Week. Basketball. I've been playing basketball since fourth grade. Do you play any other sports? Yeah, I run track. I do the 200, the 400, and I jump, the triple jump. I think last year um, going out for track really helped her um, develop some speed, quickness, and just learn how to compete in a different sport, and that's carried over this year to uh, the basketball court. How long have you played with Dalen? Um, I played on the same team as her for I think two years now. I don't know. If, I think this is our third year. So she has really grown a lot since her freshman year. She came in very raw, um, basketball skill wise, um, and but you could tell that she was a, a really good athlete. What are some challenges you have faced? Just competing with other people, getting more playing time. Is she a leader on the team? She's a demonstrating leader, like you want to do the things that she does in practice. Would you say she's a leader on the team? Um, I definitely think that she leads um, through her actions. She's not the most talkative person, but when she does talk, then it's good stuff. Um, she has sort of a very joyful way of playing basketball. She looks like she's enjoying herself out there. She's one of our better defensive players and has really improved her offensive game this year. And do you have any words of advice or encouragement to any other players or younger kids? Um, probably don't focus on the little things. It's like how you end that matters and your attitude towards everything. Thanks guys. Moving to hockey. Boys hockey had a game last Tuesday against Cambridge Isani taking the win five to zero. And the girls te hockey team lost against Cambridge one to three. Last week, the wrestling team had a crossover conference at St. Michael against St. Michael on Friday. Hey Saints, I'm Mike Connor here with the weather. Today, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 17 and a low of 5. Tomorrow, will be mostly sunny with a high of 16 and a low of 1. On Wednesday, it will also be sunny with a high of 16 and a low of negative 2. And Thursday, we're looking at a high of 16 and a low of 2. Friday, we'll have a high of 19 with a low of 16 and sunshine all day long. Moving along to the weekend, Saturday, we'll see cloudy weather with a high of 25 and a low of 8. And on Sunday, we're looking at a mostly sunny day with a high of 28 and a low of 8. That concludes the weather for this week, Saints. Stay safe.